This is the EM Student Podcast, aimed for students on their EM rotation on their drive in the shift. We'll cover high yield topics and tips in 10 minute segments to get you a head start to succeeding in the ED. This is Brad and Peter, and we're back with another episode. Today's topic the unwritten curriculum. So, today we plan to cover the unwritten curriculum in emergency medicine. So, what is the unwritten curriculum and why is it important? Well, as you're discovering pretty much every rotation, there are written expectations of things to complete. And then there are unwritten things that people would like to see you do, but they don't tell you. They may not tell you what these are to further the difficulty of it. Sometimes you'll see your colleagues doing little helpful things. I know I did. And you'll think to yourself, why didn't I think of that? There are oftentimes the additional tasks that will change your performance from good to outstanding. Have you noticed any of these while you were on your rotation in the ED? Definitely. As we discussed in the last podcast, organizing your presentations and being concise is definitely noticed to be an important feature. We had talked about accountability for your patients as well. Don't just see the patients and present to an attending. Make sure to follow the clinical course, manage their pain, call the consults and admissions if possible. In general, it seems like as much as possible, we should try to act like an intern, right? Right on target. As much as you can and how much independence you'll have to operate on will depend rotation to rotation. In general, it's best to check with your attending at the beginning of the rotation, but no one will ever be mad at you for asking, hey, can I call my own admissions and consult consultations on my patients? They may say yes or no, for example, at the hospital we work at, and I imagine most hospitals, the ICU admission needs to come from a resident or attending physician as a direct handoff. Additionally, if you ask if you can write discharge instructions for your patients, this is another super appreciated task. We'll cover writing good discharge instructions in another segment, though. Gotcha. Like most things, after we talk about it, it seems obvious. Another thing I sometimes struggle with is how to balance interacting with residents and attendings. I know the emergency department is busy, and I always worry I'm monopolizing their time or bothering them. How do I manage this? I had exactly the same feeling when I was on my EM rotation. I was always worried they were so busy, and I was being too squeaky a wheel and trying to get too much attention. In general, rest assured, if you're rotating in an emergency department that has students, it is expected for attendings and residents to dedicate some educational time during every shift. That may be five minutes or on a slow shift that may be longer. It will also be attending dependent. In general, update your senior on the patient's status, including any therapies you give, aka response to pain medications, fluids, etc. Update them on any tests you have that comes back. I would write down every lab on my sheet as a medical student to prove I was tracking all my patients. This is not a good use of your time. Evaluate the labs and imaging and critically appraise it. Write down things you think you need to act upon. For example, if the patient has a BMP and their potassium is 4.5, it would not be a fantastic use of your time to review every one of their normal lab values. If their potassium is 2.8, however, you might want to discuss with your senior about repleting their potassium and think of reasons why their potassium would be so low. Understood. So interpret the labs and talk with our senior about how we intend to adjust our plan accordingly. How about if I have questions on the labs or imaging? Should I ask my attending and resident right away? In general, if you think your patient is toxic, critically ill, always bring this to the attention of your senior attending right away. This means anyone having respiratory difficulty that looks sick with a low blood pressure, if they have a surgical abdomen, meaning their peritoneal, if they are septic and in need of emergent antibiotics. Like the famous quote on what constitutes pornography, there is no set definition, but you'll know it when you see it, and you'll know when the patient's sick. And the more experience you get, the better you get at recognizing it as you go along. If the patient isn't critical, you have some time. Try doing a small lit search to see if you can answer your own question. If you need to report results to your senior, try not to take more than five minutes on your search. In general, you sound more knowledgeable about the subject. It will show that you take initiative on our self-guided learner if you take the time to do a little digging. For example, if you want to know why the paracentesis was concerning for SBP, that is definitely something you want to look up yourself, rather than relying on your senior to plug in an answer for you. Some great tips. Let's take a change of tact here and talk about sign out. I often feel left out or extraneous. What is my role? Great question. In general, sign out is a time where your resident or attending will transition patient slash information. Try to be proactive and ask them if you can present a patient during sign out. You'll definitely want to observe the common practices of sign out before doing this. As like the EM presentation, the EM sign out is much different than that on the IM or surgical wards. Additionally, consider taking notes over on sign out. That way, if a senior attending needs help, or if you can help with a task and a patient, you'll be able to assist much better. In general, it also shows you're trying to keep your pulse on the department and shows good initiative. 
I guess from opening to closing, after sign out, the only thing left is to ask for feedback. What's the right way to do this? Or is there a right way? Uh, feedback can be an easy and a difficult ta task, depending on the learner and the educator. In general, it's much better to ask about specifics. If you ask, how they do today? Most people will just tell you, yeah, yeah, good. If you ask, is there anything else I can work on? Some senior attendings will take the time to think, but some will just say, nope, great job. However, if you can say, how did you feel my oral presentations were today? On that patient with abdominal pain who had appendicitis, was I on target? I've been practicing and wanted to make sure I'm progressing in the right direction. That's a much more focused direction. Definitely ask for feedback if you can, especially if it's not offered. And, you know, you should use your judgment about what topics to try to cover. Awesome. Any other helpful tidbits you can think of to offer in this unwritten curriculum? A few other short and sweet points. Try to learn the EMR so you understand how assigned and unassigned patients are listed on the board. Try to proactively ask to go see these patients rather than being told to see a patient by the physician. This doesn't mean you should just chew through them and see each patient. You want to follow them along, but you also don't want to have to be prompted to see a patient each time. Make friends with the nurses and the techs. This is a, always a daunting task, but so worthwhile. It will be your teachers and the ED. Keep your eyes out for procedures they can help you with when you have downtime. Make sure to ask to do peripheral IVs, Foley placements, and G-tubes. Pretty much any procedure, as long as you let your senior know where you will be, and they're not counting you for the workup of a patient that you have that is already active, this is always viewed in a positive light. Another thing, food breaks. They can be weird in the ED. Bring some snacks with, assume you'll have bathroom breaks, but don't expect that you have a lunch or dinner incorporated with. I think with a focus on wellness that this aspect of medicine, including in emergency medicine, is changing. But some attendings can be surprisingly picky on this, especially if they're swamped and then you ask, hey, can I go for 30 minutes to go eat lunch? Sometimes people get rather ornery about this. In general, you'll pick up on the culture of this pretty quickly at your institution and what is regarded as acceptable. Also, make sure to read over your start of EM checklist. Do your readings. Usually uh, you'll have a rotation email or some kind of curriculum set up at the beginning. Don't forget your chance to shine and use the decision rules as we had talked about in the previous podcast on signouts. EM has a lot to learn. Don't feel too intimidated by all these points. Hopefully this act is an easy jumping point for you into rotation. Oftentimes most people learn these points by the end of their first or second rotation. Hopefully this session will help you so you nail them on your first rotation. Thanks for tuning in to the EM Student Podcast. Please email us at emstudentpodcast at gmail.com with any comments on the material or idea for future podcasts. Remember, the ED is a serious place, but it's also about doing what you enjoy. Good luck and go have some fun.